Sign up with Flood today and get free installation and a chance to win a fantastic holiday. Sign up for broadband and voice. Open up your world. Sign up. Video and broadband. Watch stories and Sign up for voice and video. Tell them how it ends. Sign up for any flow service or see where your balance. And you can win a trip for two to Trinidad to experience a pulsating carnival 2014. Plus two weekly prizes of goods vouchers, grocery vouchers, cabs, and turkeys. Sign up. Sign up and win. Or visit discoverflow.co for details. Flow. This is CC6 News Night Week in Review for December 9th to December 12th, 2013. It was the week in which $933.9 million is the projected amount for Grenada's revenue and expenditure for 2014. A former Minister of Finance says the budget presented on Tuesday is fluff and old talk. And Dave, St. David woman and her four children evicted from temporary home. But housing minister says the situation was out of her hands. In sports, St. Vincent defeats host Grenada to retain regional cricket title. Details when we return. Now it's easier and more convenient to pay your flow monthly bills when you use the check drop box at our Dusty Highway office. Simply write your name and account number on an envelope with your check enclosed and deposit it into the check box or write your phone number at the back of the check, attach the check to the bottom portion of your bill, then deposit it into the check box. It's that easy. For more information on bill payment option, visit our website at www.discoverflow.co. Flow. Watch. Talk. Click. Large windows, large doors, small windows, small doors. At St. Lou Metal, the size doesn't matter. You order the size you want and we make it to your specifications. If you need our new heavy-duty casement windows or half-inch impact or laminated glass or any other doors and windows, no problem. What size? Any size. You get it at St. Lou Metal. And coming soon, PVC windows and hurricane shutters. St. Lou Metal, 19 Frequente Industrial Park, powered by Grenadian Innovation. Thanks for joining us. I am Samantha Williams Worm. The finance minister in parliament on Tuesday put before the nation $933.9 million estimates of revenue and expenditure for 2014 and reiterated the call for serious sacrifice from the working class to manage the country's massive debt. Building a new economy through higher productivity and shared sacrifice for the benefit of all was a theme under which Prime Minister and Minister of Finance, Dr. the Right Honorable Keith Mitchell, delivered his $933.9 million estimate of revenue and expenditure to the House of Parliament for the year 2014. Prior to entering the Parliament to present the budget to the nation, Dr. Mitchell spoke with CC6 Newsnight on his expected response to the package. Uh, I have excitement uh, and, of course, anticipation. I'm looking forward to this. Do you expect a favorable response? I, I think so. When in balance, when we had the minuses and the pluses, and the pluses will come last. So do you think this budget would mean a, a, a Merry Christmas on the faces of people knowing the present situation here? Yes, I think generally speaking, if they understand the need for some measure of sacrifice, and then they can look and see the possibilities that are coming. In the presentation that lasted approximately 2 hours and 20 minutes, Dr. Mitchell outlined the estimates of revenue and expenditure and their locations to the various ministries. The 2014 estimates of revenue and expenditure provides for expenditure and repayments of $933,932,530, not a billion dollars. We ain't rich yet, Mr. Speaker. The overall budget can be summarized as follows, Mr. Speaker. Recurrent. Recurrent revenue, $471.1 million. Recurrent expenditure, 
$487 million. It represents a current account deficit of $15.9 million. And a primary deficit after grants of $44.0 million. Capital expenditure of $262 million. Principal repayments and amortization, $185 million. An overall deficit after grants of $139.4 million. Mr. Speaker, this does not include the significant debt relief and the soft loan and grants expected from the international community. We are giving you as of it, as of it, it, it is today, Mr. Speaker. The seven largest allocations, the finance minister says, will go to debt servicing, pension and gratuities, and the ministries of education and human resource, youth and sports, health, finance and works. The debt, which, which as I said doesn't include debt relief, $280.4 million, 30% of total expenditure. The Ministry of Education and Human Resource, $110.2 million, 11.8% of total expenditure. The Ministry of Youth and Sports, $70.1 million, 7.5% of the total expenditure. The Ministry of Health, $67.2 million, representing 7.2% of total expenditure. The Ministry of Finance and Energy, $57.3 million, representing 6.1% of total expenditure. Pensions and Gratuity, $51.4 million, 5.5% of total expenditure. $50.4 million was allocated to the Ministry of Works. The overall deficit of $139.4 million will be financed from domestic and external sources. A loan authorization bill to raise $140 million to support the implementation of the 2014 budget accompanies the 2014 appropriation bill in this session. Most of the external financing will be direct support for Grenada's homegrown program. The 2014 estimates of revenue and expenditure also highlighted additional revenue measures that included a new income tax threshold, 15% withholding tax on lottery winnings, and the restoration of the 15% VAT on construction materials. Sharian Noel, CC6 News Night. Former Minister of Finance Nazem Burke is not pleased with the estimates of revenue and expenditure, which was presented by the man who now holds that office and describes it as fluff and old talk. After sitting in the Parliament and listening to the presentation of the estimates of revenue and expenditure for 2014 that totaled $933.9 million, former Finance Minister in the NDC administration, Senator Nazim Burke, says he was not impressed. Senator Burke says in his view, Prime Minister and Minister of Finance, Dr. the Right Honorable Keith Mitchell, and his administration have never been able to properly manage the affairs of the country, and the delivery of the budget that is filled with fluff and all talk is testimony to that fact. Overall I'm not impressed uh, I'm not, and, and I'm not impressed because I'm not surprised. I heard nothing of substance that will change my thinking that Dr. Mitchell is always heavy on promises and cheap talk but failing to deliver. This government in spite of all the talk that you hear about management and so on, this government has not demonstrated an ability to manage the country's economy. We have not seen it. Yes, from 1995 to now, what we're seeing is the same wild moves um, bearing nasty results for the people of Grenada. The opposition senator says after the removal of the cleverly put together literature, this is what remains. Property taxes are going to go up, uh, uh, doubled more than. Income taxes are going to be increased. The manufacturer's rebate is going to be increased or reduced, which means more pressure for manufacturers. A new tax is going to be imposed on uh, tourism uh, facilities. Agricultural lands are going to be taxed. What is it that we're hearing that is going to improve the condition of the ordinary people? Some new levies and charges are going to be imposed, and fees are going to be increased. We don't know what they are. They have not been told to us. What exactly um, is being given to the people, the ordinary people? What is exactly has been given to them in this budget? The promises that we'll build four hotels on Granans Beach, the promises that 
um, the government is going to build a new parliament. Well, we knew that before. The monies were raised before. The promise that we will build a new stadium, we knew that before. Uh, the, the monies were raised before, so I've not heard anything new. Labour Senator Raymond Roberts was also in the parliament for the delivery of the budget and shared his views with CC6 Newsnight. Magnificent presentation. If you like Shakespeare and you are very much one of those thrilled by literature, the Prime Minister did a wonderful job of you know, using the stage and the audience. But the reality is, for those of us who have studied a little bit of the reality of 2014, this is a therapy for the weak heart in mind. The fact is, 2014 is going to be the year for Grenadian workers and people in general for pain, first of all, groan and pain. That is what it's going to be. Senator Roberts says the workers' movement has done some analysis on the taxation to take effect in 2014. Take middle managers and upper level people. Husband and wives are going to be losing together incomes of 600, 700, 1200, 1400 dollars. They're already heavily committed to banks, their children in university, so many things. That income is income loss because the tax man takes his first. So you may very well get to the bank with a deficit. So I'm saying to you, my prayers is that the Prime Minister's projects, the many projects, I pray God that they all become a reality. Because if not, the 14 million he speaks about for poverty might have to be quadruplet. Because really and truly, pensioners, you go into the Kajona home, you go into the, the, um, the um, Chichester home and take from people who, some of them are, you know, affected by so many illness. So this cannot be a good day for Grenada Caracou and Pity Martinique. I don't know where the euphoria is coming from. The senator says if the government falls short on its quest to deliver jobs, 2014 will be one of tremendous difficulty for Grenadians. Blossom Alexis Welsh, CC6 Newsnight. The Christmas holiday may not be so bright for one St. David resident and her children. After she was evicted from the home she was temporarily placed in by the government some three years ago. Officers of the Royal Grenada Police Force, a bailiff and representatives of the Ministry of Housing oversaw the eviction of a resident of La Calome in St. David on Wednesday and some residents in the area are crying foul as the incident is happening just before the Christmas holidays. The eviction of Elizabeth Souls, a mother of 12, four of whom reside with her, says her ordeal began about three years ago when she dismantled the board house she was residing in, in Hopevale, St. George, and the material was allegedly used by the man where it was being stored. She was then placed in temporary housing by the Ministry of Housing and Social Development, but received notice of eviction on Monday. Though she did not want to appear on camera, Miss Souls gave an account of how the situation escalated to her being evicted. I tell them I break my house and I had it by a man holding and I tell them I'm going to um, give me a spot to put the house and they, 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 they give me the okay and they give me and I come in here and the time was up on me and they, they are spent one year, two years and they said we'll make it three years match. So they extended the time for you? Yeah, they extended the time and the, the lady in the ministry put me in the hands of the the courthouse in St. David Police Station, right? And then after that, I told them well, we had case in and between we had case, and I go to them and tell them, well, look the situation, how the chief me lumber, when I went there for me lumber, so if they could give me a little time, say, well, it is give me, the, the, the marriage is give me a little time to remain in the house day, but the time already passed. She says she understands the situation, but acknowledges that the authorities could have waited until after the Christmas to complete the process, giving her ample time to secure premises for her family. But I say they could have do better than that. They could have leave me in the house day for December and do something for January. They could have do something better than that. Everyone, everybody wanted to spend a good Christmas and a happy new year. And her mouth is very, very bad. And I don't do anything like that. But I didn't even ask of God. But I don't like what they do. They treat me really bad. It don't matter. My time passed. But they could do a little better than that. She said a friend offered her a piece of land to build back her board house. But this offer was withdrawn. And she believes the same person allegedly used the material to build a house for two lodgers. Ms. Souls says on serving the eviction notice on Monday, she approached the bailiff for an extension until after Christmas, but was told that she has two daughters who attend secondary school and they should ask for assistance from their boyfriends. Uh, I asked the gentleman, I said, um, well, give us the for, for Christmas and to think. He asked me, me two girls are going to happy secondary school. 
if if they have a man, what the man do um, get, um help the, the, with the mother? And my daughter started to cuss him. I said, don't cuss him. We will leave him up to God. Hold on, hold on. This is the person, this is the, 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 the bailiff? Yes, the man who come and give me the, 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 he don't give me the piece of paper, he come and just read it out, give me. Bailiff, yes. yes, and then um, he tell me two daughter, all you have man, what all your man, do, do help all your mother. And then daughter say, you give us man, those we school children, and I tell him, don't curse him, leave him up to God. Okay. And when you asked him if, it, if the time could be extended, is that all he said about the, your daughters and mm -hmm. the man? Did he, did he say that mm -hmm. there's any possibility of extending the time? No, he, he said he say the time up. He said um, they come in Wednesday morning and put us out. She says she has secured somewhere to sleep for the night, but does not know what she will do after that. She said the government has promised her a plot of land to rebuild her house, but at this point she has no material and she is hoping they can help her in this regard. Wayne Francis Wright, CC6 Newsnight. When we return, new date for establishment of the Grenada Tourism Authority. Only one dishwashing liquid can do the job. Quicks is the expert in taking out the toughest grease easily. You know you can trust it. Quicks cuts grease better, full stop. This Christmas, make your holiday season even brighter with Digicel. Simply top up with $15 or more for your chance to be one of five lucky customers to win a $10,000 shopping spree, plus great prizes like blue phones, watches, backpacks, and more. Over $100,000 in cash and prizes to be won. Share that special feeling. Top up today and brighten someone's Christmas. Be extraordinary. Digicel. Sign up with Flood today and get free installation and a chance to win a fantastic holiday. Sign up for broadband and voice. Open up your world. Sign up. Video and broadband. Watch stories and fun. Sign up for voice and video. Tell them how it ends. Sign up for any flow service or see where your balance. And you can win a trip for two to Trinidad to experience a pulsating carnival 2014. Plus cool weekly prizes of goods vouchers, grocery vouchers, hams, and turkeys. Sign up. Sign up. Or visit discoverflow.co for details. Flow. Breeze removes stains in the first wash. The other detergents, not always. You have to wash it all again and use twice the amount. So, which one costs more? Do the math. Choose Breeze. Unbeatable stain removal. Welcome back. On Wednesday, a mother of 12 was evicted from the temporary home she has shared with some of her children for the past three years. But the Minister of Housing says the matter was out of her control as the court had taken over the case. Minister of Housing Honorable Delma Thomas says the eviction of Elizabeth Souls from a house in Lacalome was a court order and her matter had been taken out of the hands of the ministry. Miss Souls and her four children were on Wednesday evicted from the house where she had been given temporary accommodation for three months by the Ministry of Social Development. She lived at the premises for over three years and the matter was given over to the court which ordered her to vacate the premises. When this order was not carried out, she was subsequently evicted. Minister Thomas, who was speaking with CC6 Newsnight at the Trade Centre on Thursday, says the Ministry was not involved at that stage. But what I do know is that the lady in question was given a spot. So she was given a spot and given the material to build the house. An extended time was given to her to complete the house, the house and move in. What, has, what, what happened is that the court, there was a court order, so it was no longer left to the Ministry of Social Development. We have done our part in terms of giving her extended time, but there was a court case going on. And therefore, what happened yesterday it was that the court was taking action and I mean the ministry would not intervene when the court when the court is taking action. She says although the ministry cannot intervene in the court's decision, the situation is still not acceptable and the ministry will do everything it can to help. What we can do is see how we can help because it's in no way acceptable as a Christian society. We can accept that our, our lady with four or five children is on the street because there's no place to live. And even though we gave material, we still have that, that moral responsibility to ensure that they have a place to lay their head. So I have asked my permanent secretary to look into it to see what can be done in the interim. 
Miss Souls had told CC6 Newsnight that when she was served with the eviction notice on Monday, she approached the bailiff for an extension until after Christmas, but was told that she had two daughters who attend secondary school and they should ask for assistance from their boyfriends. The minister gives her views on this. I just can't understand how a belief, somebody who's supposed to be trained and professionally trained that is, can tell a mother with children, we have a responsibility to protect our children. And even if we know that children have boyfriends, it's our responsibility to ensure that that doesn't happen. So for a belief to say to, to a mother that they should get boyfriend is unacceptable and need to be dealt with immediately. It's unacceptable. It's our responsibility, not only government, but the wider Grenada to protect our children. And that, that is so unfortunate that if that is the case, that yeah, it is well, very, very, very right. unfortunate. So you're saying that that will be looked into at some point? Sure, I will be getting, well, well I mean, the belief will maybe be working with the court, not the ministry, but I still, as minister with responsibility for social services and dealing with the whole issue of protecting our children, I will look into it. Mrs. Thomas says, as it is close to the end of the year and with budgetary constraints, what the ministry can do is limited, but the situation with Miss Souls and her children will be looked into. Wayne Francis Wright, CC6 Newsnight. Prime Minister and Minister of Information Dr. The Right Honourable Keith Mitchell during the 8th Annual Media Awards reiterated his commitment to addressing Clause 6 of the Electronics Crime Bill, which has garnered negative attention from local, regional and international media associations and individuals. President of the Media Workers Association of Grenada, Sherry Ann Noel, during her address at the 8th Annual Media Awards on Sunday, again challenged the Prime Minister and Minister of Information, Dr. The Right Honourable Keith Mitchell, to make good on his word to remove Clause 6 of the Electronics Crime Bill. Clause 6 of the E-Crimes Bill, which was passed in Parliament on June 28th, makes it a criminal offence liable to imprisonment and hefty fines if anything considered offensive or libelous is transmitted via any electronic medium. I must say, however, that while tonight is all about celebrating our achievement over the past year, I make another call on behalf of the Association for Prime Minister and Minister of Information, Dr. The Right Honourable Keith Mitchell, to act speedily on his promise to remove Clause 6 of the Electronics Crime Bill which in its interpretation poses a threat to members of the profession. The inclusion of the clause had drawn harsh criticisms from many media organizations which saw it as a return to criminal libel which Grenada had removed from its law books. Dr. Mitchell, via a telephone interview in September, stated that the bill will be returned to the Parliament for removal of the clause, but four Parliament sittings later, that has still not been done. In addressing the gathering, Dr. The Right Honourable Keith Mitchell again spoke to the request of MWAG as it relates to Clause 6 of the Electronics Crime Bill. On the issue of the Electronic Crime Bill, I have been advised by members of our legal team that they do not necessarily agree with the conclusion of the media workers in this regard. But my own view, as I indicated to them, even if that is the case, if it's causing a problem, then we don't need it. And that's my view. The less noises you have in the society, whether from whatever quarters, the better for the country. And therefore, it is in that context, not necessarily agreeing, but in that context, I said, we have asked the Attorney General Office to work with a couple of persons in the media to ensure that that section is tabled before Parliament. We are hoping we can do so at the sitting of Parliament post the budget which starts on Tuesday. Dr. Mitchell in his address also reflected on the work of the media during his over 30 years in politics. He says while there are some weaknesses in the media, the institution is needed in more ways than one. I firmly believe that this should be led by the media workers themselves. There was an attempt before, as some of you know, with initiative of government and the media workers, which went to naught. And I believe 
is because it was perceived to be having a political connotation. And since we all agree this is necessary, I challenge the media workers tonight to take the initiative. You will get our maximum support. Dr. Mitchell also called on MWAG to take a leading role in the establishment of a media policy which he says is needed but must be driven by the media and not government. Janelle Andrews, CC6 Newsnight. The date has been extended for the winding up of the Board of Tourism, which was scheduled for December 10th and has been pushed back to December 31st, and employees will continue to work until then. Minister of Tourism and Civil Aviation, Honorable Alexandra Otway Noel, says closure of the Grenada Board of Tourism and the establishment of the Grenada Tourism Authority is still on track, and the delay in the changeover is due to technical difficulties. The minister, who was speaking with CC6 Newsnight at the Trade Centre on Thursday before discussions on the budget continued, says people and their jobs must be handled with care and carefully. Okay, well, there's no, there's no um, alarming reasons why it's been delayed. It's just you know how things go. Sometimes you need a few extra days to, to, to get everything sorted. Uh, you know, we're dealing with people, and so it requires, um, you know, we want to handle it with kid gloves, and also not only that, but there's a lot of paperwork and a lot of information to go through, and so you know it's just a process. So, but we're very excited about the the GTA opening, and uh, we've got a lot of uh, campaigns that are already underway and so we're, we're moving along. She says thanks to the staff of the Grenada Board of Tourism and paid special tribute to those who will not be joining the Grenada Tourism Authority. The Grenada Board of Tourism is shutting down but um, you know we continue to thank them so much for all the efforts that they've made and there are a few people that will be moving forward into the um, into the GTA and others who are retiring and so on so but um, you know the thing is they have made their, their contribution and we're very grateful for that and we're just moving on you know technology and new new things nowadays new ways of doing business and so we need to just make sure we're on the cutting edge. Minister Otway Noel says winding up of the Grenada Board of Tourism has taken longer than expected and the December 10th date for that to happen has been moved to December 31st. I believe the date was the 10th of December was the final date. Right. But, you know, um, the thing is there there's obviously a gray area somewhere in between where the merging has to happen, you know, and, and moving from one into the next. So so we're, um, we, we anticipate the 10th of December is still the date, but there's some time to move some things and, you know. Well, we've passed, the, we've passed the 10th of December, so I'm saying, are they going to be there till the end of the month? Like The the, the, the end of the month, yes, yes. Okay. The, the 10th of December was the original yeah. date, but the, the end of the month is what we're looking at now. The date set for the official commencement of the GTA is January 1st, 2014. Wayne Francis Wright, CC6 Newsnight. Coming up in sports, St. Mark retains title in Champion of Champions football tournament. The Leap is about giving you the ability to explore your potential so you can keep up with the fast-paced world we live in. Leap into the future with Flow's broadband packages. Turbo 10, $75. Turbo 20. Turbo 30. And introducing Turbo 100. Leap. Let's evolve as people. Call me. Call me, call me down. Nothing can I hide in my country. So I open up your crib. Hey, yes. Hey, in hey. order that I should marry. When did, did you jump so far? Friendliest people you'll ever meet. Wise man with black stone beside him. <laughs> Live on Community Channel <laughs> 6 every Saturday. 2, 2, 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. It's Sound System Saturday.
Grenada. You are being watched by the hardest hitting commentary team ever assembled, and they tell you as they see it every Monday at 8 p.m. on Community Channel 6. Watchdog. Biting commentary. A biting commentary. Repeat broadcast Saturdays at 8 p.m. <laughs> biting commentary. Welcome back. Grenada fails to capitalize on the chance to capture the regional T20 tournament going down to the defending champion St. Vincent in a hard-fought encounter at home. St. Vincent and the Grenadines defeated Grenada by four runs to win the 2013 Windward Islands 2020 cricket tournament at the Grenada National Stadium on Sunday. Grenada were on course to defeat the visitors. However, tight bowling and two untimely dismissals from the Vincentians restricted the host to 107 to 1 for six, despite half centuries from openers Lyndon Lawrence and Andrew Fletcher. The two openers had a partnership of 121 runs, with Fletcher being the first to go after smashing three fours and seven sixes of 41 balls to pile up a total of 70. Lyndon equaled Fletcher's performance, hitting 71 of 49 balls, which included six fours and three sixes. Manager for the Grenadian side, Randall Batiste, says they now look towards winning the two-day contest. The team is a very experienced team, guys who are played at the highest level, guys who are represented. They win all Island at some form, whether under 19 or senior, so they are not new to this surrounding, so I expect them to do well. Vincentian captain Lyndon James says the competition was tough throughout the tournament. I think um, we'll just continue to play basic cricket, you understand? The bowlers bowl the correct line and lens. And understand and try to set a batting target and try to reach it. For the two day, I mean, um, we missed it out last year as uh, three consecutive years. So um, we'll, we want back that championship also. So um, we'll be coming hard at, 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 at um, all the teams. Dominica was also successful in the first match against St. Lucia by five wickets to finish third in the tournament. The teams will now prepare for the two day tournament, which bowls off on Tuesday with St. Vincent playing Dominica at Boucher du St. George and Grenada meeting St. Lucia at La Sagesse playing field St. David. St. Mark retains championship title in the female division of the primary school Champions of Champion football tournament. St. Mark has retained the title of the National Inter Parish Girls and Boys Champions of Champions football tournament which was played at National Cricket Stadium, St. George. The young girls from Sunset City played unbeaten in the female leg of the tournament, which featured 72 players, finishing with a maximum of 15 points from their five matches. The competition is into its second year, and St. Mark has won the two consecutive titles. Organizers say this performance of the girls paves the way for continuity in women football in the parish, as the victory came on the heels of St. Mark's secondary female team, winning the Republic Bank Right Start Cup. St. George placed second with nine points and St. Patrick third with six points. Alicia Charles of St. Patrick, the sister of national midfielder Marissa Charles, was voted most valuable player. On Wednesday, the boys were in action with participating schools from River Sally Government, St. Patrick, St. Andrew's Anglican Primary, from Big Paris, St. Andrew, defending champion Burnet Government of St. Mark, St. John's Roman Catholic, representing the parish of St. John, St. David's Roman Catholic of St. David, South St. George, representing St. George, and Hillsborough Government from the sister isle of Karakou. But in the end, the defending champion, Bonnet Government, held on to the title and again emerged champions over Hillsborough Government of Karakou and St. Andrew's Anglican Primary, who finished second and third respectively. Isaiah Simon of Hillsborough walked away as the tournament's most valuable player, while Jamal Belfon of St. Andrew's Anglican took the Golden Boot Award. That's all we have for you in Sports on 6. A recap of the headlines is next. Recapping the headlines, it was the week in which $933.9 million is the projected amount for Grenada's revenue and expenditure for 2014. A former Minister of Finance says the budget presented on Tuesday is fluff and old talk. Saint David woman and her four children evicted from a temporary home, but Housing Minister says the situation was out of her hands. In sports, Saint Vincent defeats host Grenada to retain regional cricket title. 
That brings us to the end of C6 Newsnight Week in Review for December 9 to 12, 2013. Top stories from C6 Newsnight can also be seen on our Facebook page, Flow Community Channel 6. On behalf of the news team, I'm Samantha Williams-Worm, thanking you for joining us.